Lost George, you are now listening to a Street Mind Beat, Mind Beat Spinnings. Anybody hear me? Yes. All right, you got your drinks in hand? Oh, yeah. Beautiful. So, uh, Boston George has just arrived, so that's the good news, and uh, so I finally get this party started. I just want to thank everybody for coming. I'm just as excited as uh, you are for this, and... Um, you know, I want to welcome him in. And he should be right around the corner here. So this is uh, pretty cool. And uh, that's uh, pretty awesome. Good to see some familiar faces. But as 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 I know him, it's through the movie. It's pretty cool that he's about to be here in about two minutes through a friend of mine, Tony. So it's a small world. He's coming to Scola. So uh, yeah, this is pretty amazing. So welcome, Boston George. Here he is. Hundred years ago. <laughs> All right. Our special guest tonight is obviously Boston George, and uh, also known as El Americano. Isn't that right? A few people would call you that. Um, many of you may have seen him in, in the movie portrayed. You know the movie Blow, starring Johnny Depp. That's where myself. Fell in love with the movie, and obviously this, this legend here next to me. And um, he was a major outlaw figure in the 1970s that ran with the Medellin cartel, one of the largest cartels in history, which was responsible for up to 85% of the cocaine smuggled in the United States at that time. Pretty impressive. Is this correct? They had moments in Bad That's true. And um, I guess Boston George was also released in 2014. He spent 20 years in jail for that. And we're just going to ask a few questions. Be yourself. Talk. And I believe we'll have a few of you guys that have a, maybe a question or two. If he's willing to do that, uh, you'll be able to uh, ask a question. And that's, uh, so he's, he's willing to do that. So that's pretty cool. So we're on it. Thank you for coming. And uh, so what, what, what area, I know you're from New England, where were you born? In um, Weymouth, Massachusetts. Weymouth, Massachusetts, beautiful. And what high school did you go to? In Weymouth? There was only one, Weymouth High School. Awesome. And then from there you went to college for uh, business, I believe. Firing the, the dream. A few colleges. Right. <laughs> and which, one, which ones were those? University of Southern Mississippi, amazing, in Hattiesburg, which was, uh, you know, in the land of, of blown out racism at that time, in the early 60s, and, uh, and then I, I got tired of that business and uh, moved on to the University of Tennessee, and had to get the hell out of this, that Southern Syndrome, and uh, the next one was in uh, Long Beach State in California. And, uh, you know, California dreaming, buddy. Amazing. And that's what we see in the movie where you uh, started uh, selling marijuana and uh, by the kilo yeah, to Boston, I believe, right? Yes. Started the whole thing and coming to Washington. It's amazing. Yeah, on the road again. Years later, you went down to Columbia with uh, Pablo Escobar. Right. And you were the main person that set up all the uh, the roots in America, the first American. Isn't that correct? Right. Pretty impressive. Cheers to that. Anyone have a shot on the table? Hey. <laughs> Anyone have a line on the table? <laughs> now we're talking for it. I thought you were going to bring some. It was on the poster. It's in, his, it's in the tire. Beautiful. That's ironic because uh, Dennis Larry helped 
helped make the movie was uh, Ted Demi. Right. Huh? And uh, the first thing they asked me, I'm in jail. And Ted Demi is the producer, right? Yeah. Of Blow. And they said, uh, I said, they said, we're from Hollywood, we're going to make a movie. And, That's incredible. And yet, at the time, you didn't know who Johnny Depp was when they first yeah, brought him to you, right? Can you guys hear him? A little bit. A little bit closer. All right. Let me hold the mic. I can't handle it, honey. All right. Well, let's <laughs> do it. All right, next week. As long as you keep it close to your mouth, you're good. Okay, and ironically enough, uh, that's done. Ted Demi, he kept saying, I, you know, I just hope you get out someday alive. And uh, ironically, he died two months after they made the movie. Oh, man. Of a cocaine overdose. No way. Yeah. Wow. Coincidental, huh? He stayed true to the school. That's incredible. Yeah, and what was happening? He was uh, having, he was having small heart attacks. He thought it was indigestion. And it was a UCLA basketball game, and uh, he caught the ball and uh, dropped dead before he hit the floor. Awesome. Yeah, I never met, got, never got, got to meet his son, and, uh, and it's, it's uh, you know, I love Ted, he was, it was a sad day that day. He's responsible for the movie Blow, right. bringing light. Plus he did, uh, before he made my movie, he did uh, called City on the Hill. But Ted, Ted's son hangs around with uh, his name is Dexter. Dexter Demi is another great one. <laughs> Beautiful. And he hangs around with Johnny Depp's son. Oh, really? Did you get along with Johnny Depp? Uh, did he similar? It's like I knew him my whole life. That's incredible. A thousand lifetimes before that. That's incredible. And it all came through. Jack Kerouac and on the road. That's it, baby. Yeah, yeah. He came to visit me the first time and I said, Jesus Christ, you look like you slept in a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I was up all night in the village trying to figure out what to bring you. And I said, well, what the hell was it? Or is it? And he said, it's on the, my Bible. He said, it's on the road by Kerouac. And that, I read that in high school, and I knew I was going on the road. And I said, we'll be okay, John. That's amazing. Yeah. Because prior to that, you didn't know who he was. No, That's I had amazing. no idea. I mean, Edward Scissorhands, like, <laughs> wasn't down the road for me. <laughs> and like, right. yeah. But, but was it Jump Street also? Yeah, 21 Jump Street. <laughs> right. <laughs> Portray you amazing in the, in the movie. Is, does the movie portray you in good light? Is it? Is it? Are you proud of the movie? Because when we watch it, we we think it's real. Every you know part of the movie. It's real, goddamn it. Is, is is it the whole? Is most of it pretty accurate? Or is there any parts that you would say? No, it's 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 hundred percent accurate. Incredible. Because they wanted to make it. Some Hollywood stuff, and uh, and uh, I think it's real. And Jefferson, uh, the director, he said, uh, "The guy's right here in front of you." He said, "Look, what are you, uh, what are you, what are you going through all this bullshit for?" He said, "Either make it right or, or don't make it at all." Right. And he said, you can, "If you don't make it right, he said, I, you can take the five million." You gave me a sticker, and 
after they left, they said, did you really tell them this, would you really have told them to stick it in the sun? Well, maybe I have to think about that one for a little bit. You know, Johnny is like, you know, he's from Bizarro World. Bizarro World. Yeah. And I went to see him, what was it, six months ago? Yeah. And he, has, he bought the whole, the whole street in Beverly Hills. Awesome. Five mansions on it. And he went to bed, and I said, I gotta leave in the morning. He said, well, you don't have to leave right away. He said, you can leave on my, my jet. I said, I'll take that. I said, but, uh, I'm going anyway, John. And he said, uh, okay, I'll see you in the morning. And uh, the bodyguard came down the stairs, and I was sitting in the living room by myself. And, uh, he said, Johnny sent you a present. And I said, well, what the hell is it? And he said, it's five naked hookers. <laughs> and I said, you guys are a little bit too late, man. <laughs> they laid that a dollar short. And they had done that. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Is there any uh, scenes in the movie that they wish you would have put in? that weren't put in. I know there's a few hidden scenes that uh, no one got to see. Is there anything that you would have liked to have seen be put in the movie? No, be, my mother's portrayal of my mother was good enough. <laughs> uh, half Irish. So you're half Irish? Yeah. What's your other half? Dutch. Beautiful. You look Portuguese to me. I feel like it sometimes. <laughs> My great uncle. I worked on Portuguese boats, though. Did you? Yeah, off the Cape. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, uh, we're fishermen. I don't like your goddamn soup, but. Uh... <laughs> fish heads. Yeah. I know. If I didn't eat fishes again, I, know, I would have died. Fish That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> What happened to Tuna? <laughs> I went and found Tuna after 30 years. And he lives in Western Massachusetts and he runs a goddamn dairy farm. Which I gave him anyway. <laughs> and, and, I mean, he's still not such shut of a dollar. But <laughs> <laughs> he's okay to tune in. And, and so I said, guess what, tuna? I said, he said, what? And I said, I had a big party for Blow the Movie at Goins Chinese Theater in Hollywood. And I said, you're invited, everything paid for, everything free, fly out there. Come on, and he said, I can't go, he said, because I have a weekend up in the woods in Maine with a family. <laughs> I said, well, you're fucked. I'll go to the tail right here. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, you know, that, that line, uh, my ambition succeeded my talent. That was, that's really motivational, I think. Was that, uh, was that your personal line, or was that for the movie? I think that, well, I stole it from some, some genius author, and, you know, but it's mine, of course. Oh, the other thing I really want to ask you was about the cards we had in the movie. What was your favorite? I mean, did you love, like, the AC Cobra, or what, did you have a favorite card? Yeah, my favorite car was the, uh, the Mark, one, Mark, Mark One Mustang. Yeah, beautiful car. I mean, that was a kick-ass car. Yeah, was a, that took down Ferrari. Uh, that's a great choice. But the other ones were 
They were nice too. They were all super toys. Uh, a car is like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. It's funny. Stop, stay, stop stay in the garage too long, guys. <laughs> Gotta warm her up once in a while, right? <laughs> Great questions, everybody. Should I go now against the window, Stephanie? How about the other characters in the movie, like Derek specifically? With uh, Paul Rubin playing his part. Were the other characters, um, well, like yeah, I, I talked to, to Paul frequently, and which is amazing. I said, first time I talked to him, he said, "Hi, George." I said, "You don't really fucking talk like that, do you?" <laughs> but as far as the People being portrayed in the movie. I mean, during the whole filming of the set, well, the whole goddamn movie set was blown out on coke. So it was coke everywhere. Yeah, I mean, they used to come see me. <laughs> prison. They looked like they all looked like they'd been up. Like Bella Lugosi up there. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, they had to get into character. <laughs> Isn't that correct? Yeah, of course, Johnny Depp got the best job of all. He, he spent most of the time with Penelope Cruz. That's it. That's very awesome. He's lucky. Yeah, well, he's lucky and unlucky. Unlucky in love. Oh, yeah. Sure. All right. You guys good back there? You go in the corner, to the right. Is there a question? Hey, where's all your cash, man? What happens to all your dough? Where you go? We're digging it up tomorrow night. Okay. You got a coffee kid in yeah. your backyard? It's buried at the girls' school over here. It's one of the ovens back there. Pardon? I was just saying it's in the it's in the oven back there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I'm not upset with anybody. I mean, you know, you can spend your whole goddamn life living in regret. What do you get out of it? He always says, who gives a fuck? <laughs> the whole scope of the universe. Who really gives a fuck, you know? And that makes me think, like, really? It doesn't matter. I mean, I spent 20 years walking those hallways. I call them the hallways of hallways. They never end. They're always going on and on the next day and the day after. And the hallways of hallways. Inexplicable, unless you participated in the insanity of it all. And. Beautiful. Yeah. Every, whatever you plate of, of caveat is a price to pay. Yeah. It's all about the money. Where's the money going, kid? Where's the money going? I don't think this guy's ever going to leave me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the number one question you should be being asked? Good question. Okay. What's the number one? I know, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> well, I do and I don't. <laughs> well, I, I 
hate being asked about, you know, who fucked who in the end. It was Carlos or me. Or, yeah. And where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, man, you know and I know, it's all about the dough. <laughs> and my, my other question is, <clears throat> in the movie when you had gotten out of jail, you went to the bank and they said that, I don't know, it was the Pandemanium, I don't know. In a manium bank. Bank. They said, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you think they really confiscated it, or do you think that there was something shady behind it? No, it was confiscated by Noriega. He went nuts. Oh, okay. Nationalized the banks in Panama. Okay. And, you know, my plan was to move it from Panama to Switzerland. They're all smart guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> and... Unfortunately, it never worked out, and ironically enough, it was that the CIA had the money in it, too. But that's another story for another time. <laughs> Maybe you'll do it in a docu-series that I'm hearing about? Is there a docu-series? Yeah, that it's I in there. It's still working? Yeah. It works? Inside. But everything stopped dead in Hollywood. Yeah. You know, nothing's happened for a year. And, oh, I goddamn eighty million dollars right now, and I'm on now. <laughs> okay. I have more. You got, I'm, I have more give me I'm, one more, because no, I know no, 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 no. you um, came here. I know you're. No, you're, I'm. I'm good. I'm good. Give me one more. How's your health? Well, I was doing great. Okay, and I was coming across in a car I would was Rhonda and her girlfriend, and we stopped to, to get some Indian bread in New Mexico at a restaurant. And I said, I don't want any goddamn bread. And uh, I'll just wait in the car. And I was sitting in the car, and I didn't have any, any shoes on. That spider bit me on the toe, a brown recluse. Destroyed me. Yes, I mean, they wanted to cut my my leg off. Well, I gave him my toe. <laughs> but I've had a tremendous ups and downs since then. And that's why I'm in this goddamn thing. And but I'm making a comeback now. All right. Yeah. 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 Right over here to the right, we have. So I was just wondering who the beautiful woman you're sitting with uh, is. That your wife? Or, uh, no, I thought Tony, of course, but I'm well, not went to the bathroom. Uh, Tony sometimes wears a wig. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my wife. That's your wife, yeah. Wants to look like Rhonda. Takes care of me. Baby sits my ass when I get moody and pissed off. And she's, she's all the things that I, you know, need. Like, I'm, you know, it's my Irish grandmother used to say, God takes care of them. It's only apple juice, guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's the good apple juice. Hi, George. Hi. My name is George, too. I'm old George, though. <laughs> I'm not at the bottom of Boston. No, I am. Uh, we're pretty close. We are the same age. And um, I grew up during your time. Absolutely. This is my son Adam. I was, I was talking to him early about that, you know. Uh, went to some great parties, naturally. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't into that part of it because I was drinking too much uh, old granddad. <laughs> that was my thing. Old granddad beer. Uh, 
but you know, uh, uh, you've had a very exciting life. I mean, to, uh, right up to today, actually. I mean, uh, you got a good story to tell, and you're telling it. Well, thank you, thank you, George. Oh, really? And, you know, my whole life was lived, lived on happenstance. And believe it or not, and people thought that I sat down and planned out the whole goddamn mess. I mean, it was like, who the hell could plan anything like that? And it was okay. All of it, the cartel, the whole thing. And one day I was sitting at Medellin, Colombia, at Pablo's ranch at the, the meeting room. And, like, and he, he, he said, you know what we're doing tomorrow? And I said, what? And he said, we're going to blow up a commercial airline with everybody on it. They blow up a commercial airline? And I said, oh, wow. The guy, I'll catch the next flight to my Unbelievable. I mean, that was too much for me. That's a little overboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you ain't kidding. What are your regrets? What are your regrets? That's good. What do you regret doing everything you did? I don't have any regrets. You have no regrets? That's beautiful. So we're in the middle here. And because and regrets are a waste of time. Yeah. Well, I gotta tell you, watching the movie, I like the relationship you had with Dad. He really loved you. And that was like, I don't know, it just made the whole movie come together when you watched the relationship in that movie with the Dad. And I want to know if that's real. Did you have that really great relationship with your father? Yeah, it was real. I love that part of the movie, the best of everything. It's real. I love that old man. Oh my God, he just, he, he looked at you and said you could do anything. He just never was down on you. Except he had to listen to my mother all the time. I know, I know. <laughs> I was like, damn. Damn. He's a little I, 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 I know you love your mom, but oh, no. you know you love your mom. Oh my God, it was crazy as a, a witch in hell. Dave, anyone else at this table? Else? I got a question. With today, with all the banks and stuff tied in, how could we even handle that type of money and move it like you could back in 76, 77? You can't do it as well. Bitcoin. They don't have to. Yeah, it's all followed, though. They don't have to, though. It's like it's a whole new game. You know, far beyond my conception, you know, they move money. Around, yeah, incredible. Back then, you're doing 300,000, 300 million. I mean, that's a billion and a half today. I mean, Bernie Madoff was a bad guy. You know, he's still chump change compared to what these kids steal. True. Yeah, what did you make in total? You would say, I'll take out marijuana and cocaine combined. And profits. Probably a yeah, hundred million. So what would that be in, in today's money? Billion? No, that's a period for that. Wow. I mean, what do you think? R rough as estimate. Probably just seventy-five million. Billion, seventy-five billion. Yeah. That's incredible. It's hard to even comprehend the amount. <laughs> you had one more question, my friend? Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious if there's any place uh, when East where you're going to travel to, any place you want to see that you haven't been to before. You mean before I'm deceased? <laughs> <laughs> I travel anywhere I can, everywhere. I mean. That's what I keep on keeping on. <laughs> yeah. And see where Tom Brady goes next. <laughs> sure.
Bush. Stevie Blue Eyes says, give him a call. Then <laughs> answer your phone. All right. Fresh off the press. <laughs> You guys were great. That was pretty special, huh? Yeah, pretty special. I think uh, we're going to wrap it up uh, when it comes to, unless anyone else has a question. <clears throat> no, but I have a request. Sure. You got a number. Whether it be now or later, I'd like to get on video. It's my favorite, 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 one of my favorite things of the movie. And my next tattoo, which he didn't want to do for me <laughs> right now, but, <clears throat> and if you don't, I'll completely understand. No pressure. Just in case you tell me to go fuck myself, I want Whoa. that on video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would like to... May the wind always be at your back, the sun upon your face, and the wings of destiny carry you aloft to dance with the stars. I said they wouldn't let me go to my dad's funeral. Oh, I know. And so they gave me a tape. And I made that tape to say goodbye to him. And every word on it. I love it. It's true. In all these type of movies, and you, you know, in certain neighborhoods, you grow up and you want to be a gangster, this and that. What would you tell a kid? Just don't do it, huh? No, I wouldn't tell a kid that because you can't. Get in. You're right. You gotta be good at it. I would tell a kid. Want to play the game? something out about myself a while back and when the judge sentenced me he said he said I want to know something are you in my chambers and I said Judge O'Toole out of Boston and I said what is it Judge and he said he said I'm going to have to give you a long sentence I said thanks and uh, said, but I've been, I've been wondering about something my whole life. He said that. I said, Jesus, I must have a boring existence. And, and what it was, and he said, you are like 25 years old, 28. He said, and you had millions of dollars. He said, why don't you just quit and go away? And I said, I thought. And Brenda, if you don't stop that, I'm getting into a divorce. I <laughs> <laughs> That's love right there. <laughs> and, and so I found out something that you got a radio voice, we want to hear you. It wasn't, it wasn't about, after a while, it wasn't about the money or the game. It was, it was, it was staying at the table as long as they could play the game. There's no way of backing out of that. No. Did you work with any other cartels or Italian mob, mob or anything else that we don't, have never heard of? A bunch of lunatics here and there. Everywhere. <laughs> was the mob ever uh, connected with Howie. him as well? Of course, the, the great Howie Winter. <laughs> Somewhat great, I guess. But See, that's something I didn't know. Yeah. That's pretty... Uh, you're connected with everybody, huh? Well, you know... You can be a, a big fish in a little pond or a little fish in a big pond. Okay. And 
Because those guys, I knew them from jail. Right. And when they found out what I had, I didn't want it. Of course. And because the Jewish lawyer had to tell me what the hell was going on, and what, you know, and he said, uh, he said, those guys don't care about the money, that's the whole thing, and he said, they just want to kill me, and I said, I don't think I'd like that. And he said, no, 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 I want you to know. <laughs> Except for the mouse. I like the mouse. Ron the Who likes the mouse? I quit, man. That's it. That's Ron that would have a to it. I got the name Boston George from looking for an apartment in Long Beach, California. Long Beach State College. And the girl said, where are you from? And I said, I don't know, I'm Weymouth, Massachusetts. I mean, nobody ever heard of that goddamn place. No, it's expensive and, as shit. So I said, uh, Boston. And I said, well, yeah, Boston, George. And I said, yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> and that's how it became Boston, George. Boston George, you are now listening to a Street Mind Beat, Beat Spinning.